I see education as availabil access, availability to resources, uh, resources in terms of knowledge or in terms of material resources. And these resources can be at different levels. You can have it at a local level, at a national level, at a more global level. Um, so I don't see education as a process of homogenization. No. I've done a lot of work with curriculum development and for example, I don't particularly give value to national curricula because national curricula are then homo uh, homogenizing the heterogeneity which any community has. And when you have a nat national curriculum, then yes, you're making the whole population controllable. And education becomes a form of control. Education then is a system of input of values and information which uh, have been pre-established by the nation or the groups of power who control the nation and the rest of the population has uh, uh, access which they cannot choose to, they're obliged to, to take on that set of resources, of knowledge resources. That produces a homogeneous notion, a nation which is very easy to control. Now I see uh, education in a different way, uh, education uh, involving participation, disagreement. Um, I think we can only, we learn from, based on what we know and what we don't know. Right? So whenever we're acquiring new information first, is always a process of relating the new to the old. Right? But it cannot reconfirm the old, otherwise you don't acquire anything new. Right? So it means going away from what you know, but connecting the new, what you don't know, to what you do know. So it's a constant process of taking you away from where you came from, but never separating you from where you came from. So it's this a process of reconstruction. Um, so when I don't see a curriculum as being national, which homogenizes, I see a curriculum as being regional, where you have to take into account first what do you know, why do you know it, where does it come from, what you know, where does it come from, and what are the other possibilities of knowledge. So you connect knowledge which is available locally in a particular community to knowledge which is available at the level of the region, the nation, the globe. I have a different understanding of what is globalism. Uh, firstly, because in Brazil, globalization and globalism in Brazil is uh, Globalization is not even discussed. It's not an issue for us, as it is for Europe and North America. And I have participated in various other projects in Europe about globalization, which have bothered me because, especially with Britain, in Britain, globalization is seen as, uh, in education is seen, we have to understand the rest of the world, but we don't question what we know. What we know is taken as a parameter for knowledge for the rest of the world. But we have to understand how they are different. But that doesn't mean we question what we know. So the starting point or the general parameter is always the North. And for me in education that's a problem with globalization. When we consider our own identity, we think we, think we are individuals because this is a cultural assumption. In some cultures, the concept of individuality does not exist. Okay, let's assume, like uh, in Brazilian culture, which comes from West, the Western cultural tradition, there's the, the idea of individuality. But if we break it down and see how the idea of individuality appears, we can understand this process, this trans process that I'm talking about. So wh where does this individuality come from? Because I have a name, I have a separate body, right? therefore, uh, I'm individual, so I, I'm capable of thinking, I think differently to someone else, someone has to talk to me, to address me, therefore I'm a different entity to a, another person. But if we consider this critically, then we say that, but my name, I didn't give myself my name. Right? My name was given to me, so I come from somewhere. My, uh, my, if my name was given to me by, by my parents, my parents decided who I am. Right? Secondly, uh, if we make a connection between ourselves and, and our parents, then we begin to see, but I saw my mother and my mother s saw me differently to how my father saw me. Mm -hmm. So I had different relationships to my mother and to my father. 
I had a different relationship, let's say, to my siblings, my brothers and sisters, my grandparents. But I, I still was given only one name. Mm -hmm. Then we can, once we begin to analyze this critically, we can see how it's the concept of, of singularity of identity is a lie. It's a cultural construction. Right? It's a myth. In other cultures which don't have this idea of, of individual identity, what's important is not the name that you have and the singularity. It's exactly the relationships between the others and you. You are you, who you are because of the others you relate to. So this is how I, even the concept of identity becomes uh, cultural. Uh, and identity is a word which is very much used now whenever culture is talked about. We are discussing it a lot, though. but it's not questioned. See, the, because it's, it, it's, very, it's a term which is very, very close to, let's say, the northern uh, western tradition, because it's connected to liberalism and the, uh, the western histories, especially the European cultural histories.